How can iceberg wreck the mild steel Titanic? The crew managed to steer the ship to the left before the collision, causing a long side collision that punctured the hull. Water gushed into the chambers, and the ship began to tilt. The captain had a great solution. Pump out the gushing water with ballast pumps. These chambers were not enclosed, and water overflowed. What do you think would happen in this situation? To understand this tricky situation, we must first learn about the Titanic's watertight compartments. These thick metal dividers, known as bulkheads, divide the ship into 16 compartments. You can see the details of the riveting technique they employed to make each compartment watertight. Even more interesting was the design of the compartment doors. They were also watertight. Interestingly, in an emergency, these doors were meant to close in a few seconds. If accidental water leakage were to occur, the watertight design ensures that the water won't enter the next compartment. The heart of the ship, the steam engines, were kept in this compartment. You can see how they turn the propellers. The Titanic even used a steam turbine, which was kept in the next compartment. The steam turbine's duty was to extract energy from the steam that exited from the steam engines. The steam turbine ran the third propeller. The coal required for the steam engines was kept in these chambers. They were called coal bunkers. In the empty spaces between the coal bunkers, boilers were kept. The boilers generated the steam required for the steam engine. You can see how the workers unloaded the coal from the bunker and fed it to the boiler. Exhaust gases from the boilers were discharged through the smokestacks called funnels. There were four such funnels on Titanic three of which were used for smoke discharge, while the other was used for ventilation. The workers are now installing the most crucial part of the ship, the propellers. When the propellers spin, the ship moves forward. One might think that if a ship hits an iceberg, the soft snow of the iceberg will not cause any damage to a huge ship. To understand what actually happened, let's study the cross-section of an iceberg. As you can see, an iceberg has several layers. The uppermost layer consists of soft snow. However, as we go slightly deeper, the hardest part of the iceberg, the blue ice layer, is revealed. This means that if a ship hits an iceberg, the outer soft layer of the iceberg will crumble away, but the inner hard portion will make a strong impact with the ship. With these details, let's see what happened on the fateful day that the Titanic went down. The crow's nest guy of the ship saw the gigantic iceberg too late. The ship was running at its full speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Can you tell what would have happened to the ship if the ship had a head-on collision with the iceberg? Obviously, a direct collision would have wrecked at least two of its compartments, and many people in the front region of the ship would have died. Can such a collision cause the ship to sink? We'll find out the answer later. For now, Let's see the real collision and its impact on the ship. Stopping the ship at such a small distance was impossible. The crew did everything possible to avoid the collision. The person responsible for steering immediately started to steer the ship to the left. There lies a beautiful mechanism just below the steering wheel. When the driver spins the steering wheel, he is in fact moving a piston. The piston's movement is transferred to the rear of the ship via a long hydraulic line. At the rear, there are two steam engines to control the rudder's movement. Based on the steering guy's direction of rotation, the left or right engine will receive the steam supply, resulting in rudder movement. Along with the steering operation, they also reduced engine speed and even reversed it. The propeller spinning backward decelerates the ship more quickly. Thanks to all these efforts, they were able to steer the ship slightly towards the left. However, avoiding a collision was impossible. The iceberg below the water surface hit the side of the ship. And as we saw earlier, the hard portion of the ice had an impact with a tremendous force with the ship. The impact of such a tremendous force on the rivet connection is illustrated here. Due to the rivet failure, out of 16 total compartments, around 5 compartments plate sections fell apart. Soon enough, ocean water flooded the originally watertight compartments. 
With the help of an experiment, let's understand how wrought iron with high sulfur content behaves when temperature drops. This is a low quality wrought iron. If I hammer it, it won't break. Now let's reduce the temperature using liquid nitrogen. Temperature is uh, minus 12 now, minus 6 now. Let's see. So, low quality rotten breaks easily at low temperature. Now, back to the main topic. What do you think will happen when the water rushes inside the ship? The workers in the boiler room first notice the ocean water gushing into their compartment. Imagine their sheer panic. The ocean water slowly started to fill the compartments. Can you tell what will happen to the ship if the first two compartments are filled with water? The ship will just tilt slightly. The bulkheads are sufficiently above the water level and the watertight compartments will ensure that the water won't enter the remaining compartments. The ship is safe. The brain behind the Titanic's design was a young man named Thomas Andrews. According to his design, up to four breaches of the compartment were safe. I have a scale down version of the Titanic ship with exact same height of the bulkheads, also with the same draft of the ship in proportion. Now let's add a hole in the first four compartments and see what happens to the ship. With four breaches of compartments, the ship is drinking water, is tilting, but you can see that the ship is stable, it's not sinking down. That means Mr. Thomas Santos' calculation was right. The ship is stable up to four breaches of compartments. Now let's add one more hole and see what happens. Now we have five breaches of compartments. This time ship is tilting a lot. You can see the stern of the ship is slightly going up. Angle is still increasing and water is overflowing like a chain reaction. One compartment to another compartment. Angle is further increasing. Stern is completely up. And the ship is going for a plunge. This is a wet titanic sand. This is exactly what happened to the titanic ship as well. In the titanic, Around five compartments were ruptured. The water overflowed from one compartment to the other. And the angle of the ship continued to increase. This continued like a chain reaction. The captain of the RMS Titanic, Mr. J. Smith, came to know about this devastating news within 10 to 30 minutes. They were checking the blueprint of the ship. As we learned earlier, the Titanic was safe until four of its compartments filled with water. The captain learned about the water flow chain reaction from Thomas Andrews. He must have known then that the ship was unsalvageable. However, the captain had a great idea to slow down the death of Titanic, pump the gushing water out. The captain knew that their pumping capacity would make it impossible to fully dry the deck, but at least they could save more souls on board as the ship sunk more slowly. The crew did their best to run the pipes from ballast and bilge pumps and pump out the water. This is the main reason the workers in the boiler room worked so hard till their last breath. The pumps were steam powered. The longer they were able to supply steam to the pumps, the slower the death of the ship. As expected, the gushing water overpowered the bilge and ballast pumps, and the captain came to the conclusion that Within two hours, the ship would sink. However, here comes the big question. Even before the start of the voyage, the Titanic was warned about the presence of icebergs 400 miles off the coast of Newfoundland in the Atlantic Ocean. In such risky situations, the ship was supposed to travel at low speed, around 22 kilometers per hour. However, the captain declined this suggestion and instructed the crew to go at full speed. Why did he make this decision? 
Contrary to popular belief, the captain didn't want to set a world record for the shortest voyage from Europe to New York. That was not possible. There were faster ships at that time. Captain Smith was extremely confident that the Titanic was unsinkable. The crew believed that the Titanic was unsinkable mainly due to three reasons. The first has to do with its special double keel design at the bottom. To understand more about it, let's visit the Titanic's construction site. In those days, riveting was the main technique used to form strong joints between two metal sheets. For riveting, workers used hydraulic riveters, which made their work easier and faster. Now let's observe the riveting operation at the keel of the ship, the foundation of the ship construction. You can see this region is double layered. Once the foundation part is ready, the remaining sheet plate arrangement is easy to install. The workers connected millions of small plates using rivets. We already saw how these plates connected via rivets played a major role in water leakage after the side collision. The remaining construction stages, such as construction of chambers, installation of boilers, steam engines, generators, lift systems, etc., are shown here. If you ever wondered where different classes of people lived on board, check out this neat visual. People in the Titanic lived in the decks above the engine and coal bunkers. You can see the details of cleverly made stairs, elevators, and rooms. As we go higher in the deck, the decks become fancier. They obviously would have come with a higher ticket price. With this double hull design, even if the ship strikes something in the water or runs around, only one layer of iron will be damaged. The ship would stay safe and stable. But what if the collision is a head-on collision? This is the second reason for their confidence. We know during a head-on collision of Titanic, the first two compartments can get destroyed and there can be water leakage in the third compartment. Let's do an experiment based on this. Let me damage first two compartments. You can see I have completely destroyed first two compartments and there will be water leakage through the third compartment. Let's see what happens in this case. Wow, the ship is stable. Mr. Thomas Andrews was again right. A head-on collision could have never sunk the Titanic ship. The head-on collision would result in the instant death of many people, especially of the firemen. However, the ship would have stayed a little tilted, but stable. Moreover, as we have already seen, a water breach of up to four chambers was safe for the ship. You can see that the water is not overflowing above the bulkhead in such a case. This was reason number three to believe the Titanic was unsinkable. Unfortunately, the Titanic was hit from the side, not from bottom or front. In addition, five compartments developed water leakage, not four, making all the calculations of Mr. Thomas Andrews go wrong. After some time, the Titanic's radio operator connected with a nearby ship called the Carpathia, which was around 107 kilometers away from their location. Sadly, it was impossible for them to reach them in time to help. The ship had 20 lifeboats on it, which the crew decided to disembark. However, the number of lifeboats was inadequate. Around 40 lifeboats were needed to save all the passengers. As the bow of Titanic was flooded with more water, its angle increased. At an angle of almost 45 degrees, the upper structure of the steel disintegrated. The front half of the ship sank into the water first. Then, the stern part of the ship followed the same fate but only after 27 minutes. Currently, the stern and bow portions of the ship are lying on the ocean bed, separated by a distance of 610 meters. More than 1,500 people lost their lives because of the huge disaster of the RMS Titanic. And do you remember this popular scene from the movie Titanic? And can you find out some mistakes from this scene? The ship clearly got tilted to such a high angle just before the sinking, but this much length of the ship was not outside the water. Our experiment confirmed this fact. Also in the movie, the ship got broken into two pieces 
completely outside the water. This is not possible in reality since such a small length was outside the water. What happened in reality was, the ship got broken into two pieces but completely inside the water. Many other research also confirm this fact. Jay's Kamur might have broken the ship completely outside the water just for a visual treat. If you ever wondered what forces caused the breakage of the Titanic, just observe this experiment. The heavy weight makes the float vertical during the sinking. However, during this process, you can observe that the float is bending. The same was the case with the Titanic. Due to the weight of the water, the front portion of the ship sank, but all the heavy equipment was kept at the rear of the ship. This developed a huge bending stress on the ship's body, and the ship disintegrated. After this incident in 1914, the International Ice Patrol was established to prevent any such accidents in the future. Many ship companies modified their existing ship designs. Similar to the double-bottomed keel, the side holes of the ship were also modified with double-layered arrangements. You'll notice here that with this double-layered hull, the chance that a punctured hole would allow water into the watertight compartment is minimized. The same technique is used in one of the largest cruise ships in the world, the Wonder of the Seas. This double layer helps protect the ship if something strikes it. Along with the double layer arrangement, the transverse bulkheads of watertight compartments were raised up. The next improvement was designing watertight bulkheads along the overall length of the ship. These bulkheads will be watertight both horizontally and vertically. They help in preventing loss of buoyancy and isolate the damaged compartment. They also began maintaining a sufficient number of lifeboats on board so that during an emergency, every person on the ship could be rescued. Developing safety regulations for ships at sea was another attempt to avoid accidents similar to the Titanic. Ships are constructed using high-quality steel materials that can withstand greater impact during any accident. Welding has also replaced riveting. This is an efficient method to prevent water flow inside the ship. You can see here that to cover the double-layered skeleton, the frame and beam of the ship, many steel section plates were welded together perfectly. Now let's visualize what would happen to the wonder of the seas if it collided with the same iceberg as the Titanic. Because of the high force exerted on the starboard, the perfectly welded hull plates just bend inside without any puncture to the ship body. Therefore, no water will enter the ship thanks to modern-day advanced welding technology. Some other techniques that make this ship safer include if an iceberg or collision with another ship barely punctures the hull, only the space between the inner and outer side of the hull will flood with water. The watertight compartments will remain intact. Next comes the bilge system. It is an essential part of the ship's waterproofing system. It's designed to pump out any water that enters the ship to prevent it from accumulating in the hull of the ship. Modern ships are sealed with a range of watertight seals, including gaskets, O-rings, and sealant compounds. They are also equipped with state-of-the-art navigation systems, including satellite-based GPS, radar, sonar, and electronic chart displays. Titanic is the biggest video my YouTube career. We are able to produce such big videos thanks to support of Patreons. So your any support on Patreon is quite valuable to me. Hoping for your support. Take care. Bye-bye.